The Catholic School, La Scuola Cattolica, Complete Film Breakdown Plus Review. Hello everyone and welcome to Anonymous Pandemonium. Today we're going to talk about the movie from Netflix, The Catholic School, or La Scuola Cattolica. This is a complete film breakdown and review. If you haven't watched this yet, and don't want spoilers please stop watching this now. Also my opinion of this film might be different from yours, and I respect that, what worked for me might not work for you, and vice versa. This is a 1 hour and 47 minute film that I will discuss scene by scene, and it will take a lot of times, so you better subscribe. Again, spoiler alert. Before I start, I'd like to give a warning to everyone watching this video that this is not intended for kids and this is only for mature audiences. And, this movie has graphic scenes that I will discuss, and if you're not comfortable with that, please skip this video. Let's start. The Catholic School is a movie based on the book of the same title, by Eduardo Albinati, which is also based on true events and it was dubbed the Sergio Massacre. I would like to take note that in this film, Eduardo Albinati is the narrator. The movie starts with a lady screaming inside the trunk of a car asking for help, while a police or night watch or approaches it and Angelo Itzo played by Luca Vergoni walks away. The movie then cuts to a scene six months earlier from the crime. It was explained by Eduardo Albinati, played by Emanuel Maria Di Stefano that they are all studying in an all-boys school and they are all raised in a middle-class neighborhood in Rome. He also introduced the characters. He started with Salvatore Itzo, played by Leonardo Ragazzini. He is Angelo's younger brother. Next is Picciatello, or pick played by Alessandro Cantalini. His mom was an actress who every one of them fantasizes about. Next is Giacchino Rummo, played by Andrea Lintozzi Seneca, who they believed perhaps the only one there who believes in true Christian values. And brother Curzio, who they think that don't seem like a priest. Eduardo also explained that it was the year 1975 and violence was the order of the day. The scene cuts to all the students lining up outside the principal's office, being interrogated one at a time due to one of the students, normally being attacked at school that resulted on his glasses being broken. The students were tight-lipped and will not snitch on the bullies because of fear of retaliation from the bullies. Devonier, was pressured by principal's interrogation, gave out a few details on the incident. Devonier said that Romilly was not bothering anyone but when the bell rang, the seniors approached him and surrounded him to prevent others from seeing what they were doing. He also said that Romilly was given a few slaps, then he was grabbed by the shirt and then tugged. And that Romilly's glasses didn't fall off, but broken on purpose. Devonier then tried to backtrack his statement by name dropping his other classmate, Stefano Gervi. The bullies were sent to an empty classroom which made me believe it was detention. One of them, Gianni Guido was called out because his father already arrived. The father was talking to the principal about the implications of the bully's actions but was cut off by Gianni's father, mentions that he will give a donation to the school. As soon as Gianni and his father is home, his father scolded him and beat him with his belt and warned him not to do it again. The next scene is in Giacchino's family home and his interaction with his family. He explained the incident with Romilly to his family and said that Romilly will only get new glasses and that's it because it always ends like that. He remarks that the school did not do anything. Giacchino's family is very religious and the Romilly situation made them have a discussion about forgiveness. The bullies meet during the night and talked about how they never got serious consequences because their parents always clean up their mistakes with money. It was also mentioned that their friend Andrea will be released from jail soon. Angelo got home and talked to Salvatore about the Romilly incident. He commended Salvatore for keeping his mouth shut. Next scene is Eduardo confessing to the priest that he lied about a lot of things to be accepted by his peers including having the same passions and ideas. He said that he feels lonely even though it seems like he is comfortable with everyone and get along with them. And that he was never his true self. He talked to his friend Arbus after the confession and found out that Arbus confessed that he did not believe in God. Arbus said that he didn't care because he is leaving the school anyway because he is not learning anything and he doesn't trust the teachers. Arbus said that Eduardo is the only person he trusts. During class Eduardo is asking Arbus about his plan to do two years of class in one. While chatting, 
Abbas was called by their teacher and asked him to answer the equation on the board. He was able to answer correctly. Eduardo said that this the reason Abbas was seen as a phenomenon in school and he was admired by everyone. Next scene is Jervie driving his motorcycle to Pick's house and had sex with Pick's mom, the actress. Meanwhile Giochino's family is in church. After the mass, his father remarked that how come none of his classmates go to church. Giochino said that his classmates attends the compulsory class in school. Giochino's father is still unimpressed. Five months earlier, Gianni is hunting with his father and they are planning on building a house in the woods if they get a permit. Gianni's father told him that he should not be emotional and he has to be cold-blooded. Eduardo went to Arbus's home and narrated that Arbus's father is a professor of mathematical logic at a university and probably interested on his students more than his children. Their studying was interrupted by Arbus's mom bringing them a snack asking about their secrets and inviting them to a game of poker. Next scene is Pick playing with a sword while his mom is sleeping in the same room. His mom woke up and asked him to stop. Pick asked for food but his mom said to just call Finanda and resume to sleep. The students went on a school trip. When they got to their room, which is shared by all of them, the bullies started drinking. After that they are in a discussion about a Jesus painting with their professor. The painting is of Jesus being flogged. In that same evening, they gathered in front of the Jesus painting and the bullies asked Devanir to remove his shirt because they will reenact the painting. They started flogging Devanir lightly and gradually flogging him hard. They said that they will stop if Devanir renounces his faith. Seeing that Devanir is getting hurt, Eduardo encourages Devanir to just renounce his faith to stop it. The bullies then stopped when Giochino came and asked them to stop. They all saw that Divanir had an erection and laughed at it. Eduardo narrated that being male is an incurable disease. That they had to be ready to do all kinds of things in order to obtain the approval of your peers. That they have to show that they are strong even if they're not. That every day, they had to prove that they are real men over and over again. At Angelo and Salvatore's room. Angelo is pressing Salvatore about how he should not be gay. Salvatore asked if he can join Angelo to the party. Before I proceed, I'd like to let everyone who hasn't watched it yet know that this film's timeline jumps, so please know that it is not my doing if I go from 5 months earlier to 130 hours earlier then back to 5 months earlier. Ok, back to the film. 130 hours earlier, two girls, Donatella and Nadia are hitchhiking and one of the bullies, Gian Pietro gave them a ride. He chatted with them and Donatello asked him for a cigarette. Gian Pietro said his name is Carlo. Next scene is in Eduardo's house and his mom is talking to his younger sister. They prayed together. Eduardo narrated that he cannot turn down the bullies' invitation because he knows there will be consequences. This scene cuts to him arriving and the bullies are wearing what appears to be a cult robe. They are all watching a chair burn. See? This is what I'm talking about when I say there are some unnecessary scenes. This is just the 37th minute mark and I already seen a few. Meanwhile, Gian Pietro is with the bullies. He is talking about Donatella and Nadia. Angelo pressured him to introduce them. In school, Pick is asking Eduardo for help on his exam. Eduardo declined but changed his mind when he saw Pick's mum. While teaching Pick, Eduardo keeps glancing at the mum's photo. Pick notices and calls his mom and introduced him. Pick's mom compared Pick and Eduardo. On the same night, Pick is playing with the sword again while his mom is sleeping unaware that Pick is aiming the sword at her. Three months earlier, in Arbus's house, Eduardo is watching Arbus and his sister play the piano. Eduardo keeps looking at Arbus's sister. On Eduardo's way home, he ran across Monica and asked him why he didn't call. Eduardo said that he lost her number. Monica gave her number again. That evening, Pick introduced Jervie to his mum. Unaware that the two have a relationship, Pick and Jervie went to a party. Angelo arrived at the party with Salvatore. He tried to mingle but he seems out of place. Angelo received good news that Andrea is already released, saying that now they'll have fun and they have to celebrate. The party turns out to be Giochino's birthday. At the party, Jervy is exchanging glances with Eduardo's sister. They meet up at the backyard and after they had Essex there, Jervy just walked away. It was the girl's first time and she bled. Outside, Salvatore saw his acquaintance, 
Sarah and tried to call her. Sarah ignored him which is noticed by Angelo. Angelo then took Salvatore to Sarah and tried intimidating Sarah until Salvatore stops him. On the way home while Eduardo in our bus was riding a scooter and they passed by brother Curzio picking up a hooker. Two months earlier, they are in class and our bus is commended by his teacher for his good essay but told him that it lacks character. In that same class, Stevenio was trying to touch Salvatore but he just pushes his hand away. Eduardo is in our bus's home and he keeps on glancing at Leda, our bus's sister. Our bus was asked to call his father to the backyard but when he got to his father, he saw him making out with a man. He pretended not to see and just went back to his mum. 70 hours earlier, Donatella and her friend Rosaria met up with Giant Pietro. Gianni and Angelo. She said that Nadia can't come because she had to go to the fun fair with her baby sister. Angelo and Gianni was polite with the two girls. Gian Pietro left and told Angelo that he doesn't want to hang out. Angelo asked Gian Pietro to be their wingman. Gianni and Angelo invited the girls to watch a movie and Gian Pietro said that he will also come to convince the girls to agree. Next scene is our bus coming home to his mom packing up his dad's things while crying. He was then shown a newspaper with his dad on the headlines admitting that he is homosexual. Giochino and his family is on a hike when their mom stumbles, as they rush to help her, they did not notice that their youngest sister ate the poison berries that she was picking. They tried helping her but it was too late. Eduardo narrated that a lot of things changed with Giochino's family after the death of his sister. Eduardo said that he met Giochino again after a few years and found out that Giochino had become a psychiatrist treated one of their classmates. Ben Nature who had killed himself, Giochino also diagnosed their other classmates. He said that Coyote is a sadist and Devonia is masochistic. He also said that Jervy died because he had blown himself up while preparing a terrorist attack. Salvatore opened Angelo's secret stash and saw cut up pictures of nude ladies. 36 hours earlier, Donatella and Nadia met up with Gianni and Angelo. The girls looked for Giant Pietro but the boys said that he has to study but will be expecting them to show up at his villa. The girls reluctantly agreed. Meanwhile, Eduardo went to Arbas's house to congratulate him for the exam, but only Leda is there. Leda invited him to lie down with her. They tried to have sex but Eduardo prematurely finishes. Gianni, Angelo and the girls arrived at the villa. They made a ruse that Gian Pietro was on the beach swimming so the girls will come in. Pick and Eduardo is in a phone booth. Pick is talking to Monica and humorously tried inviting her to come over to a party. Monica agreed. Pick and Eduardo met Monica and her friend. When they Pick's house, Pick saw Jervie's motorcycle parked outside. He sneaked inside the house and saw Jervie and his mom having air sex. Pick, although disturbed by the sight, chose to leave the house with Eduardo. The two of them picked up Monica and her friend. During the ride, Monica suggested they drop by their house before going to the party. Meanwhile, in the villa, Donatella, Rosaria, Gianni and Angelo were drinking alcohol, having a good time. In Monica's house, Monica and Eduardo paired up, went to a room and left Pick and the Monica's friend. Eduardo and Monica was about to have sex when Pick interrupted, saying they need to go home. In the villa, Angelo and Gianni held the girls up by gunpoint. Angelo said that he is part of the mafia. The girls were forced to stay in the bathroom. Gianni left to have dinner with his family and promised he will be back soon. Angelo reminded him to also call his parents. On that same night, Salvatore is in the same street where his brother intimidated Sarah. Sarah almost ran away but turns out Salvatore just wants to apologize. Pick came home to his mom and pretend like nothing happened. Gianni got home to his dad and apologizes for being late for dinner because he had a flat tire. Before sitting down, he used the landline to call Angelo's parents. In the villa, after setting up a mattress on the living room, Angelo came into the bathroom and took Rosarian out. When he brought Rosaria back in the room, she is naked and clearly traumatized. Angelo then told Donatella that it's now her turn while pointing a gun at her. When Donatella is in the living room with Angelo, she was instructed to take her clothes off. Donatella reluctantly follows but continues to beg Angelo to let them go. After being raped, she was again put back in the bathroom. When Gianni arrived, both girls are raped again. It is implied that they have been raped repeatedly by Angelo and Gianni. After some time, 
Andrew arrived. Angelo and Gianni told the girls that Jack has arrived. This is to make the girls think that they are really part of the mafia. At the beginning, Andrea seemed gentle to the girls, even telling Angelo not to treat them as such. Donatella used this opportunity to beg Andrea to let them go, but Andrea just took Rosaria to the room. Donatella can hear Rosaria being raped while Angelo and Gianni just laughed. After some time, Angelo is injecting drugs to Donatella saying that it will help her feel better, she did not want to but she was forced. Angelo and Gianni talked about how the girls are useless and they don't even like them. When Andrea got back to the living room, Angelo said that they are having problems with Donatella because she is not passing out. Andrea asked them to try a pillow. Donatella woke up to sounds of Rosaria being drowned in the tub. When she saw Andrea, she begged him to do something. Andrea just ignored him. Andrea was called upstairs and when he came back, he showed Donatella his scratches that Rosaria made. He then told Donatella that if she still will not pass out, he will have to take matters in his own hands. He gave an option to Donatella whether she wants the karate move or a blow to the back of her head with a gun. Donatella chose the karate move. She was then smacked in the face and passed out. When she woke up, there is a bell trapped around her neck. She saw that the boys are not there so she tried calling from the telephone. Before she was able to dial, Gianni caught her and the boys beat her up. She pretended to be dead and stayed still when the boys wrapped her up in plastic and a rug. Gianni and Angelo carried her, dropped her, then put her on a trunk. Andrea instructed them to take care of the bodies while he cleans up the villa. The next scene is Gianni's dad talking on the phone with one of Salvatore. Salvatore covers up for the boys. On the drive, Angelo told Gianni that this is how they bond. Gianni told Angelo that he needs to come home and instructed Angelo to wait for him. When Angelo and Gianni walked away from the car, Donatella tried waking up Rosaria only to find out that she is already dead. She tried calling for help until a night watcher heard her. The police knocks on Gianni's house and his dad answers. He was then asked by police about the car under his name, that was parked in the streets. He told the police that his son also uses it but he is now asleep. The police checked Gianni's room and saw that Gianni was not there. Angelo, just about to go back to the car saw the police and nervously walks away. He tried to drop the keys Gianni gave him but was still apprehended. Eduardo narrated that the events led people in the town to react. He also said that he never went back to school and he left on the last year of high school. The crime made their neighborhood fear for their own safety. Eduardo said that at home every mother scrutinized her child, trying to see if they are also capable of doing the same thing. Then things went back to how they were before. The last clip is Donatella's face after all the ordeal she went through. Credits stated that at the time of the Circea massacre, rape was not considered a crime against the person, but against public morality. Rosaria Lopez's death and the torture of Donatella Colasanti ignited a debate that only concluded in 1996 when sexual violence was finally considered as a crime against the person. The three perpetrators of the massacre were all given life sentences. Angelo Itzo, as soon as he was released on parole for good conduct in 2005, killed two more women. Andrea Guerra died in Morocco in 1994 after eluding arrest and having lived all his life as a fugitive. Gianni Guido, thanks to a sentence reduction has been free since 2009. Donatella Colasanti passed away in 2005, at the age of just 47. Now here's my opinion of this film. I think that the story and concept is great. Even the places shown on the movie looks beautiful. Only thing I can criticize about this is that this movie has so many characters that it is hard to keep up with what's happening. Also, there are some unnecessary scenes for me that don't really help me understand the plot better. It was a good film and it has potential, I just think that running time is not enough to give all of the characters enough screen time. That's it guys and thank you so much for watching. Please comment below if you have any movie suggestions. I hope everyone stays safe, as always.